Marshtown Mayor Gary Chicken Little Chesney informs the Morristown City Council that the election sky is about to fall. Hello and welcome to the Charles Cook Podcast. This is a uh, focus of this podcast is on local and state issues here in the state of Tennessee. Uh, I'm glad you could join me today. Uh, what kind of follow up to uh, the podcast that I did about the uh, the mayor wanting to change city elections in, in Morristown. So I'm going to jump into this right quick and uh, uh, talk about some something that's come to light to me. And uh, I've got a video for you to share with you. And in, in this video, uh, the mayor actually confirms, uh, proves that uh, what we've been saying is true, that uh, the purpose of citywide elections is to control who gets elected to uh, the city council. So uh, to have better control of it and uh, who doesn't, and more importantly, who doesn't get elected to city council. So a little bit of background on this video. It was done at a meeting that was held, um, the mayor and the city council, city administrator, that was done at Morristown Landing. That is a community center here in Morristown. That meeting was held on uh, August the 4th at 9 a.m. And uh, so this was a meeting where uh, the city administrator, Tony Cox and Gary Chesney uh, talked to the city council members about what they needed to do to change um, the city elections and why it needed to be done uh, to change the city elections and stuff. And uh, why it was so important. And, you know, uh, when I, the reason why I said, uh, called the mayor Chicken Little is because that was the whole point. He was trying to drive fear in into the council members and stuff to get them to say, oh Lord, you know, uh, we can't have that happen. And, uh, when you hear the video, you can actually hear council member Bob Garrett that uh, is his response. And so it's about, I'm gonna play you probably about a two minute clip. In that two minute clip, you're gonna hear the mayor talk about uh, a local citizen here in Morristown. Uh, I know that there's people from around the state that watch this podcast. So uh, a local citizen, here in Morristown, he's actually a black gentleman that lives here. He's well known in the community, and uh, he uses him as as a illustration of who they don't want on the council. And that's one of the things that took place in the '60s when uh, a lot of this stuff was done in these cities and municipalities. So he's going to talk about that, and you know, but he's also going to tell another plan that he has about moving the city elections from May to November. Now he's not talking about from May of 2025, the next city election, moving it from May of 2025 to November of 2025. He's actually talking about moving it from May of 2025 to November of 2026 and extending uh, everyone's uh, term in office another 18 months. Even those that come up for re-election in 2027, those would be extended to, in May of 2027, those would be extended to uh, November of 2028. So there's a lot of things going on in this video and uh, the actual whole video is about 30 minutes long that I have. So just keep in mind that the driving force behind, so they say, is to get more people to vote in the city elections by moving it to a national election and having things done then, you know, uh, for the the national election. They, they know more people come out for national elections. So uh, they're hoping that with more people coming out, people will just go down the line and push the button and it's harder for them to be defeated. That goes along with 
making the city white. So in this video, you will hear him explain the dangers of having a district elections or ward elections versus the city elections and what uh, citywide elections and the purpose of what a district election can do the city council and what a citywide election can do to prevent that from happening. So with that, uh, I'm going to pull this up here and uh, try to play it for you. And hopefully you can hear it and and everything will go good for you. You can hear it and get the gist of it. And then we'll talk about it once once I finish uh, letting it play about two minutes. Only being elected by a ward means for us in a small city with small wards, if there is a ward, say, where only 72 people in your ward showed up to vote on election day, that means Nigel Reed can get 37 people to vote for him, and he's a council member. That's what we're looking at. That's what this law does. It's exactly what it does. It's not about Nigel. Let me clear you off on mine. Nigel, if he's on his medicine, the smartest man in the market. If he's not on his medicine, you know what he can do. I guess Nigel is an example represented. It's easy for somebody who has uh, uh, one issue or who's, who is uh, uh, probably not, would not be a quality council person to easily get elected. <coughs> make council a dysfunctional uh, entertainment center. So what are our choices? What would we do? We just, we just, uh, we don't what we do it is just to do away with the wards and, and we, elect, we elect six council members, three of them, one year, and one November, and the next three and the mayor, the next November, and we just stagger it like we do now. So the three people who are running for it, Next year's election, they're not running August. They would they're running run in November. November the next no, it'd be in November of 24, uh, 25. November 26. Those who would be up for election, Bob K. Tommy, instead of running in May of 25, would run in November of 26. That's what you do. And then Mayor of the other three seats instead of running in May of 27, run in November of 28. And that's and that's the way it, it you can out by law reduce a member's term, but you can't lengthen it uh, if you're changing uh, election laws. But what we do is that anybody in the city who wants to run for three council seats can run. And yeah, you can have three next door neighbors decide to run, but you can, but that's probably not going to happen. What, Okay, there you go. There you have it. You heard what they said. The, the purpose of having a citywide election is so you can keep people from getting elected in districts or wards. Plain and simple. They proved the point right there with that discussion. That's the reason why you want to have citywide elections is so certain people don't get elected. Uh, you know, you may have somebody in a in a ward or district in the city that the people in that community in that area would like to have represent them, and they run, but the city will will keep them from being elected uh, if they can help it. And you just heard the mayor make the the case for the whole thing right there. And that's what these municipalities have been doing for years, for decades. This is why you see so much things going on in these cities that you don't see in county governments. Now, county governments are not perfect, but one thing about it is they have debate. You heard this mayor talking about dysfunctional council meetings. What he means by dysfunctional is 
if somebody shows up, if you have a council member that wants to debate the issues instead of rubber stamping everything and letting it go, that's what happens now. They rubber stamp it. They very seldom have debate on the issues. So, you know, he doesn't want debate. He wants to rubber stamp everything and let it go. Qualified council members, quality council members, quality candidates. Now, this is how they view people. Let alone, I mean, you you heard what was stated about uh, the gentleman here in town, Nigel. You know, the, that was the big, oh, my God, we can't have someone like him on the city council. You heard Bob Garrett's response. That's the way these people view the citizens that they are supposed to represent. They look down on you. They think they're above you. And what makes you qualify? The qualifying petition that you go to the city council, I mean, to the election commission and pick up the petition, get your signatures on it. You have to get enough registered voters in an area and qualify. You have to be a, a city resident to run. That's the qualifications. I guess they think that they're smarter than everyone else. You know, they're the only ones that held down a job. Or maybe we're not the only ones that's made a living off of the backs of the establishment, or, you know, not the backs of the establishment, by working for the establishment in Morristown. That's what many of these people have done. And now they're on the council. When they retire, they say, hey, won't you run for city council? That's what they do. And I can link most of them to the situation. Okay. So these are the people. They look down on you, but they tax you. Anytime they want money for something, they want a new community center, raise taxes. It doesn't matter. Take it from the peasants. You know, the unqualified. We want them to vote for us, but we don't want them running against us. We don't want those type of people on the city council. You heard it. This is not Charles saying this. You heard the man on the video make those statements. Trying to keep my blood pressure down. Because these are the type of people that think they're elitist. They have that elitist mentality that they think they're better than everybody else. And they're you may elect them, but they're going to rule you. And that's a fact. You know, and here, as I said, they're, they're taking one of the citizens, doesn't matter what they think of it, but to bring that up in a city meeting and talk about a man like that. And thank God, Joe Sinner, who was there to defend Nigel. Joe Sinner, what is a newly elected council member. First, if I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong on this one, but I believe he's the first minority council member on that council since 1964. I could be wrong, but I believe I'm correct. And he stood up and spoke up for Nigel. And then when he did, you notice how the mayor said, well, you know, not Nigel, people like him. You know, could be Charles Cook. They don't want Charles Cook on the city council. He might ask questions. He might push back. They don't want Rob Burke on the city council. He might ask questions. Or any of the other people that have run against these people in the last decade. So, I hope you've seen this and what you got from this video. Uh, you know, they don't trust the voters but to make the right choice for their for their wards and their districts. They just they don't trust you. You heard what he said. Oh, 
in a district with low turnout, 72 votes. Nigel Reed gets 37, and we he's on the city council. That's the voter's choice. That's called the democratic process. But they don't trust the voters. Now, here's the thing. You got four wards. Each ward should be split up by population about as close as they can get it. If it's not, that's on them in the election commission. So there shouldn't be no low population uh, district or ward. They should all be about the same. Now, you may have a little higher voter turnout in one versus the other, given the uh, minority and social economic uh, background of those wards. That's true. But they're going to be, you know, there's going to be more than 72 voters show up in a city election. I mean, 10% is basically what we've been getting tops 15%. Okay. So that that's a ridiculous argument, but he uses it to drive the fear factor, the chicken little deal. The sky's falling. The sky's falling. Man. Like a, a, the elitist views. And like, like I said, this video is about 30 minutes long. And I, I, I can't play it all in the podcast, but I wanted to play the critical parts where the thing, he proved what was said in Nashville when this law was uh, put in by the state legislature changing these municipality elections. He just proved the point about his statements when they say, oh, we don't do that to control anything. These elections are, are fair. He, he just told you the reason for having a citywide election to keep people from winning. Simple. His, his words, not mine. Okay? Uh, and you heard what Garrett said. You just scared me to death. Garrett's been there since 2009. Maybe it's time for him to retire. And he talks about not having qualified candidates. Can't get qualified candidates to run. Chesney talks about this is what that law has done. It has given this is what the law has done. It makes it possible for somebody like Nigel Reed to get elected. What the law done was give the people in the wards and the districts their voice back and gives them control over who gets elected and who represents them. And he knows that. That's exactly the reason why he's wanting to change everything back to citywide elections. And the only way to do that is to make it at large, all the seats at large, instead of having ward or district representation. You know, the, the democratic process is representation. This man is as dishonest, and you could, I've got the video for you. He is as dishonest as they come. And you know what bugs me so much about that? It's not that he's dishonest. It's people like that sit on the church pews on Sunday. And we wonder why politicians have bad names. But I want to tell you this. 
when it all comes down to it. It's not about the city council. They they look at it at this whole process is about them. It's about them keeping their seats. It's about them keeping their power. And it's about them controlling who gets elected and who doesn't get elected. It's not about the voters and who they choose to represent them. They got the mayor. It's a citywide election. They got two at-large council members. It's a citywide election, but they have four ward representatives, elected council members, and they are scared to death that they're going to lose their positions and there's going to be debate and pushback on things that's going on in this city and questions on how tax dollars are being spent and taxes and everything else. And I'm going to tell you, when that happens, Tony Cox does not want, want no part of it. If that ha if if this law doesn't change and that council starts turning over, Tony Cox will be gone because he is so used to controlling that council. He controls the council. He is supposed to work for them and the people of Morristown. It's the other way around. He controls them. So I'm going to leave you with this. The most you heard what Chesney said about qualified candidates, quality candidates, you know, but let me tell you who the most unfit people to be in government is. The people most unfit or unqualified to serve in government is those that believe that they're better than the ones who elected them that they serve. And we got some people, including our mayor, who are unfit and unqualified to be in those positions because you've seen how they view citizens. I can't believe that that man sat there knowing that there was a camera sitting there in front of him and made those statements. But I guess he knew that that camera, he, he thought that this wouldn't be reported. Because I guarantee, I'll, I can tell you this, it was not reported in the Tribune. The Citizen Tribune did not report this. And maybe that is the reason why last night at the end of the city council meeting, when all was said and done, Tommy Pettigo, the one of the at-large council members, thanked the uh, Tribune for their reporting on these charter changes. He thanked them. You got people who have sat in a city government meeting talking about disenfranchising voters by doing what they're doing. The people in those districts that have been disenfranchised for decades talking about degrading the citizens of this city and no reporting on it by the Citizen Tribune, and then you got a council member thanking them for it. Tommy Pettigo. But I'm going to tell you one other thing that just burns me up about it. Like I said, the only man that spoke up was Joe Center. There was people sitting there from that city council that did not challenge him on what he was doing. They either went along with it, cheerleaded it, or never spoke. If you are sitting there, when you hear trash like this and garbage like this being spewed out of the mayor's mouth, and you don't say anything, you're just as guilty as he is. Because you didn't have the guts to speak up and challenge him on it. There's a time in this country when things like this is going on, 
You have got to speak up. If we don't, we will not have our liberty much longer with people like this that view citizens and the voters this way. And I'm going to rest with that. Like I told you, I was trying to keep from getting my blood pressure up, and I've done it. But this is what this mayor and this city council, how they view people. And they're going to have a meeting on August the 29th. If you care about your city and how it's being represented, you better show up at that meeting. You better be looking to find out what time that meeting is going to take place on the 29th. And you need, and you need to show up and speak because this is unbelievable that you see that. I played the video for you. It's their words. They're the one talking. I'm not telling you. You heard what they said. If that doesn't raise the hair up on the back of your neck, I don't know what will. But it's plain to see that a lot of things going on in this city, nobody cares. 90% of the people, 90% of the voters in this city don't care. How do I know? Because they don't vote. They don't vote. Plain and simple. It's the only reason. They don't vote because they don't care but they'll be the first ones to complain. Why ain't the roads getting paved? That road up through there is terrible. My yard gets flooded. They're building something over here and it's flooding my yard. I got that the other day. I'm not even on the city council. If you don't vote, you don't care. Plain and simple. With that, I say... Uh, follow me on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, Spotify, Twitter, uh, Google Podcast, uh, whichever platform you want to follow me on. Uh, watch the video. Share this information. People need to know this. And with that, good day. God bless you. And pray for our community. Pray for our state. We're going to need it next week because there's going to be some uh, stuff going on in Nashville with this um, gun stuff going on. Pray for our nation. God bless you. We'll catch you on the next podcast.